Sarah and I will be presenting a concept for a preschool children's storybook that incorporates sociolinguistic research using a beloved Disney fairy tale. So Disney has a rich history of producing high quality entertainment products for young children and families. While Disney prides itself on its fantastic storytelling and production values, its films at times have misrepresented minority groups, basing characters on stereotypes and limiting the roles in which minority characters might appear. To attempt to counter the stereotypes that may continue to spread through exposure to these negative or limiting portrayals of certain groups, we propose developing supplementary materials to bring awareness to problematic material and present better informed representations of the groups concerned. According to linguistic anthropologist Shirley Bryce Heath, Few parents are fully conscious of what bedtime story reading means as a preparation for the kinds of learning and displays of knowledge expected in school. The books like these, which are currently available, only provide a condensed version of the film story. But we pro propose providing children's storybooks that include strategically designed questions and activities built into the text of the story to enable caregivers of all kinds to help their children learn in an entertaining and appealing way. So the product we're presenting today is a preliminary design for Cinderella in celebration of the film's 70th anniversary. The current phase of our book focuses on preparation for school and is informed by research by Shirley Bryce Heath, Frederick Erickson, William LaBeouf, and Rosina Lippi-Green. Additionally, we've consulted with a teacher who has over a decade of experience as a lead kindergarten teacher, teacher for feedback with our questions and design. So since we are marketing our product to people of diverse communities, um, while the mock-up that we'll present today does not address specific questions related to stereotypes, we will be presenting it uh, in both Spanish and in English to, sh to give an example of what the product might look like in different languages. We'll start with the Spanish version. Just for those of you who don't speak Spanish, this part this part of the story begins where um, Cinderella's uh, stepsisters and stepmother mess up her dress that she had so thoughtfully made for the ball uh, that was coming up. So. Las hermanastras gritaron cuando vieron a Cenicienta. Son mis cintas, esa es mi faja. Le destrozaron el vestido. Vamos, chicas, dijo la madrastra, y dejaron a Cenicienta atrás. Cenicienta corrió hacia el jardín, ella lloró y lloró. ¿Qué está haciendo Cenicienta? ¿Cómo te imaginas que se siente? ¿Qué haces cuando tú te sientes así? So these questions translate to what is Cinderella doing? How do you think she feels? And what do you do when you feel like this? So our reasoning for selecting these questions was we wanted to provide a resource for um, families that come from different backgrounds in which um, they might place different values on talking about emotions and feelings. And so this resource would be something useful for someone that would want to talk to their children about these things, but doesn't know how to approach it. So this product or this these types of questions would seek to um, to, to help them, those who don't know how to approach these kinds of issues. And then Ashley will continue the story in English right where we left off. Suddenly a hush fell over the garden and a cloud of lights began to twinkle and glow around Cinderella's head. Come now, dry those tears, said a gentle voice. Then a small woman appeared in the cloud. You can't go to a ball like that. What in the world did I do with that magic wand? Magic wand, gasped Cinderella. Then you must be, who do you think she is? So now that you've seen an example of why we chose the questions for the previous slide, we wanted to ask you all if you have any idea why we might have chosen this question. Please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just to get the, um, the children thinking ahead about foreshadowing as they read. Great, yes. So um, that is a wonderful response. Yeah. Our reasoning was based off of Heath and Erickson's research that um, highlights the importance of no answer questions. So these are questions where there is a clear answer and it's not something that the child can make up in their head. And as you mentioned, that really gets them to start thinking about um, the world around them and, and things like that. 
but we'll move on with the story. Your fairy godmother, the woman replied, pulling her magic wand out of thin air. The first thing you need is a pumpkin. Why would she need a pumpkin? To make food? Does she need it for something else? Um, so these are some reason explanation questions, which require kids to consider possible hypothetical options and respond with a suitable answer. Also, by asking about food and incorporating a picture of a real-life pumpkin, we're relating this fictional story to a child's daily life. So this can help children grasp the important distinction between fact and fiction stories, which can be a difficult concept to teach, particularly depending on students' cultural backgrounds. And a lot of work in kindergarten focuses on ensuring that this distinction is clear. A cloud of sparkles floated across the garden. A pumpkin rose up and swelled into a... What do you think is happening to the pumpkin? Is it growing larger? Is it getting smaller? Have you ever changed a pumpkin into something else? So these first questions focus on the expansion of children's lexical arsenal, as phrases like rose up and swelled into aren't usually part of daily life. So asking questions like these can help kids understand more advanced language. Um, the last question, again, brings the story into ordinary life. So this process of recontextualization helps children relate Cinderella's pumpkin to their own experiences, possibly of making a jack-o'-lantern or some soup. So for those of you who are curious about what happened to the pumpkin. The pumpkin rose up and swelled into an elegant coat. <laughs> <sighs> so before we conclude, we just want to highlight that this project will continue to improve as we work closely with teachers and students in a diverse uh, set of school districts. And we want to make these resources as accessible as possible by providing free online worksheets in multiple languages to address issues of misrepresentation in Disney films, as well as providing mini workbooks that would essentially be a condensed version of the full storybook. So you might see something similar to what we presented in our slideshow today. The full storybooks will be added to Disney's merchandising plan for each of its upcoming films. And we also propose that Disney um, start developing these storybooks for previously existing films. And with that, we thank you so much for your time and we'd love to know what questions you have.